Hi friends, welcome to Wildish Living where we talk about decor, vintage, handmade and creating a space that you love. Today I'm going to be talking about using vintage items in your decor. We're going to talk about the top 10 items that I look for um, when I'm using vintage. We're not going to talk about furniture, we're just going to stick to smalls and more decorative items. I think furniture in itself would be a whole nother video that I'm happy to do down the road, so stay tuned for that. So the first thing I want to talk about is art. I think that using art in your space is just a really easy way for anybody to add some interest into your space and make it more personal and interesting. And so we don't have to always rely on the big box stores or going into home goods or wherever and or Target if you're in the States um, and purchasing whatever is off the shelf because that's going to be in a lot of people's homes and you don't want to look the same as everyone else. You want to be able to show your personality on your walls. So I love using vintage art in my space. There's so many different types of vintage art you can use. Everything from actual paintings, whether it's oil paint, acrylic paint, um, and portraits, landscapes, floral still lifes. There's some beautiful, beautiful um, antique or vintage artwork like paintings that you can use. Also, you can find framed watercolors, um, pencil sketches, ink sketches. Sometimes the simpler the better. Uh, and it's nice to mix and match like paintings with drawings. If you want to do a little gallery wall, you can get a bunch of different types of paintings and arrange them together to make one big focal wall, which is a great look. Besides paintings, um, you can also look for um, vintage prints of artwork, which sometimes are a little easier to find. You can find vintage posters. Um, a lot of times they advertise, um, say, museums or markets or um, products, and especially if it's tied to somewhere where you live or where you've traveled to. So they might be reproductions, but they still have that vintage look to them, and I think that really brings a lot of interest to a space and really gives it that personal touch, so look for all of those. Um, even if you don't like the frame it's in, you can change the frame out easily. Maybe you want uh, the painting and it, you don't like how ornate or maybe old looking the frame is, you can always have it reframed into more of a modern gallery style mm -hmm. frame, which would look really nice in a modern space, but still bring the vintageness of of the art itself into the space. So vintage maps and architectural drawings also make great framed art. So don't be afraid to use vintage art in your space. I think it's a great way to curate uh, a collection of things that really show your personality and your decor and design style and makes it interesting and it's going to be something that nobody else has in their space. Another vintage item you can use in your space is hardware. Finding antique or vintage knobs, pulls, and closures can be a great way to update your modern furniture or cabinetry. If you can't find actual vintage, you can use reproductions that has the look and feel of vintage pieces. Sometimes it's hard if you need to find a full set of something that you might be forced to go down the route of reproductions, but that's okay. It still gives you that vintage look and it breaks up the whole monotony of having everything super modern and brand new. So get out there and look for some really interesting knobs or pulls or closures that you can add to your furniture or cabinetry. It's all about adding some charm and uniqueness to your space and really showing your personality. Lighting is another great way to add vintage into your space. We all know that our newer homes come with very um, boring and modern light fixtures and a great way to add some personality to your space is to find some vintage lighting pieces that you can swap out for and really add some interest. Now even if a piece um, doesn't have wiring that's up to code it's easy to either wire yourself or have someone else redo the wiring on a piece so that it is usable. We want to make sure everything's up to safety codes so we don't want to have any uh, electrical incidents in our homes but definitely make sure that you check wiring on any vintage pieces and have it rewired when necessary. Definitely look for things like chandeliers, pendants, table lamps, 
wall sconces. There are so many beautiful pieces out there that you're sure to find something that's uh, going to mix well in a modern decor. It's all going to depend on what style you like. You might like something a little more mid-century. You might like something a little bit art deco. You might love the, the scroll work of Victorian pieces. So it all depends on what your personal style is. But there's so, there's so much beautiful lighting out there. Okay, the next item I want to talk about are vases or any kind of vessel that might be used as a vase or holder or container for something. So this covers a lot of different things, whether it is pottery, whether it's glass, wood, metal. Um, you can use them to put flowers in. You can use them to corral all your pens or stationery. You can, um, I like to have really nice pieces of crockery out in my kitchen and then you can put your all your utensils in one. I've seen beautiful ex uh, examples of people keeping all their cutlery in vintage um, cups or pots on their kitchen counter which makes it really accessible but also beautiful. Um, I like to keep all my pens and writing instruments on my desk in, in like a little vintage uh, vase which is really pretty. I personally love to find vintage pottery. I have a lot of that that I use in my house and I keep lots of different things in the vintage pottery. If you have an art or craft room, you can use those to put in your paintbrushes. Um, you can use them to put makeup in your bathroom. It just adds a really pretty interesting um, touch to those spaces. It's lovely to have something interesting to put a pretty bouquet of flowers in. Uh, it doesn't have to be an actual vase. It can be a pitcher a glass, a cup, um, an urn, uh, a piece of pottery, um, you name it. If you can put water in it, you could put flowers in it. <laughs> so just go out and see what catches your eye and you'd be surprised where you can use these things in your home to add more, uh, more organization but also make it look great at the same time. The next thing I want to talk about is bowls. We all use bowls for many things, so why not find something vintage and add some fun to your decor at the same time? You can find bowls uh, made from pottery, porcelain, wood, metal, there's small and delicate ones, or there's big and chunky heavy ones. Uh, you can use the small ones for things like little soap dishes or ring dishes and large, the large pottery or dough bowls you could use to keep your fruit in, you could put decorative items in, you could have a bowl by the front door to put your keys and your change in, um, you can uh, keep your yarn and your sewing projects in a bowl near you, sometimes that's just a nice way to keep it on display but also organized. So there's so many different kinds of bowls you can use in so many places around your house. Keep it on your coffee table for decoration, maybe again in your front hallway to corral the mess that comes in there. Use them for decor on your kitchen counter or your island, in your bathroom definitely. You can use them for organization and storage in there or for your jewelry. Uh, there's so many different ways that you can use vintage bowls. Find something that speaks to you in a, a material that you love and you're going to love looking at these things as well as using them for organization at the same time. Okay, vintage boxes. Such a great way to add some fun and texture to your space but organizing at the same time because we all know that we have too much stuff and too much mess going on all the time so why not bring in some vintage boxes or container of some of some kind and bring that into your space and hide the mess if you can find something with a lid that's going to work the best to hide all the the mess but sometimes you can find a box that has it's open on the top but that might work say in a cupboard or on a shelf that's up a little higher where you can't necessarily see in something maybe in a kitchen cupboard somewhere but these boxes can really help keep you organized but also look really good at the same time. So I've liked, I like to use boxes for things like on my coffee table, you keep your remote controls in, maybe you keep your, I keep a chapstick in there, maybe a hand lotion, anything that you don't want cluttering up your side tables or your coffee table, you can put them all in one box and keep that clutter contained and keep it looking nice and neat at the same time. They have unlimited potential to store anything in pretty much every room of the house. You're sure to find many designs that will look great in your space. 
Baskets are another great vintage item to bring into your decor. Baskets come in handy for a lot of things. You can store uh, blankets and toys. Uh, you can store dog, dog toys in those, not only kids toys, but dog toys in there. Um, vintage blankets look great in the corner of your family room. You can keep all your blankets in a bigger basket. It adds a really nice uh, warmth and texture to your decor. Small baskets used in the kitchen or the bathroom um, or even the even in your main living area are great just to keep little things in. If you don't want to use a, a bowl near your front entry, maybe you want to use a little basket of some kind. There are so many designs, shapes, colors, textures that everyone's bound to find some kind of basket that's going to work for their space. The next thing I want to talk about are cutting boards. We've probably all seen them everywhere. I know you can find them easily in the secondhand stores, but also in the antique shops if you're looking for something older with a little bit more uh, maybe wear and patina to them. Um, I love using cutting boards in my kitchen, um, not only f to actually use, but uh, to display and just add some warmth. A lot of the times in the kitchen, we use a lot of um, harder surfaces, so it's nice just to bring some warmth and texture into the kitchen by, you know, everyone's probably seen them in all the magazines and all the photos right now where you would put a couple together on your backsplash and lean them again your back against your backsplash in your kitchen. I just think that's a great way to add some some character into your kitchen. It just brings that warmth. And the nice thing is that you can actually use them. So I use my vintage cutting boards all the time. I think they're fantastic. You can also use them. You can lay one down on your counter or your island or your sideboard. Um, you, can, um, you can stack a few to add interest. You can use them on your table uh, to serve hot dishes on like a trivet. So they are functional as well as, as pretty. And we can find some really big ones, really small ones, all different sizes, all different patinas. All different colors and types of wood so definitely I recommend getting yourself one or a couple vintage cutting boards and mixing them up into your kitchen um, your kitchen or dining room they're just great pieces to have you'll love using them and they're quite durable just don't let them sit in water just wipe them off or clean them off and dry them and then they're good to go Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about are architectural items. So we know it's a shame when old buildings kind of deteriorate or get torn down and they're destroyed or they're left to ruin. Luckily, there's lots of salvage companies out there that go in and take the best pieces from these architectural uh, parts of the homes and they remove them and then they have them available to sell to other people to use in other, in other ways. You can find some beautiful pieces to incorporate into your space. Some items can actually be added into the architecture of your home, but uh, other pieces are nice just to use as decor items for display on a shelf or a table. Parts of columns, spindles, porch supports can be used uh, as plant stands or candle holders. Corbels can be used to hold up shelving. The details and warm finishes bring such a warm and beautiful touch to your space. And it makes us appreciate the craftsmanship of long ago times that we no longer have when they build modern houses. And the last thing I want to talk about are textiles. There's so many things you can do with vintage textiles in your decor. Vintage blankets are great to uh, drape over a piece of furniture, pile on a, a bench or in a corner, throw them in a basket. Um, a vintage blanket in the right color and texture can really uh, make your decor pop when you add them in. They're nice sometimes to, if you can find vintage quilts, to lay on the end of your bed. We can use vintage linens, um, vintage uh, table runners, tablecloths. Sometimes we can use these textiles not necessarily use them for what they were intended but we can use them and upcycle them into different into other items in our decor such as using um, uh, like old grain bags and uh, grain sacks and you can upcycle that into maybe reupholstering small pieces of furniture or making a little market bag of some kind 
Um, embroidered or monogrammed linens can be used to make pillow covers. You can reupholster little stools with it. It just adds a nice little character sometimes to see little monogrammed or embroidered details on something. You can also take a piece of embroidered or monogrammed um, linens and put it in a little frame. Sometimes that just adds a sweet little touch um, to your space as well. There are so many things you can do with vintage in your decor and I hope I've inspired you to try some of them out and see what you can come up with in your space. Get the pieces that speak to you, that inspire you, that bring you joy, that make you smile when you look at them. And don't be afraid to play around with how you use them in your space. And if you got some value out of this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. It really helps me to create more content for this channel. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time on Wildish Living. Bye!